Hey everyone, you're watching the latest episode of A to Geeks. My name is Kira, and today we are going to be taking a look at Underwater. When an earthquake destroys an underwater research lab, a group of researchers are forced to trek across the seabed in order to get to safety, but quickly learn on their travels that they are not alone in the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean. Now, I would say that I really enjoyed Underwater, but... I have to confess it's probably the most stressful viewing experience I've had in a long time. It's a very suspenseful film and it really plays on that fear that we all have of the unknown. And that's made even worse by exploring a setting that I think most people would find uncomfortable. What we have here is a bit of a mishmash of a cast. We have Kristen Stewart, who is kind of front and center here. She plays a character called Nora. She's a mechanical engineer who is obviously doing some kind of work, well obviously everybody's doing work on this laboratory that makes nobody's going to be there for a holiday. We also have Vincent Cassell, he plays uh, Captain Lucian. He is who everybody looks to to get them out of this situation. He's a hero and he's also I think a role model to Nora. You really feel like she looks up to him a lot in what we see unfold in the story. Now supporting these two, because I think it's fair to say that they kind of took the lead here, we have John Gallagher Jr, TJ Miller and Jessica Henwick. You may recognise John Gallagher Jr from Ten Cloverfield Lane. I do think he was wasted here. We don't really see that much of him as the film unfolds. We, you know, we start off very strongly and then he just, his, his presence dissipates. We also had TJ Miller and he played this guy called Paul who I felt was a bit of an unnecessary clown in the film. You always see him, he's always acting the Egypt a bit and I could have done without him here. And then we have Jessica Henwick and she played this girl called Emily. She was some kind of researcher, like I think specific. Kind of felt like she was a device to make all of the other characters look better. She was bit of a wet blanket. I needed something to grab onto it with her and it wasn't there for me. This is a creature feature, right? If you love a monster movie, this is definitely one to check out. The monsters here were not a letdown. They were horrible and I loved them. I like the fact that they were constant because so often we have these films and you just think you're battling with the elements, you know, mother nature is just striking back and then right at the end, an alien type looking thing is just thrown in there. You're like, oh, that's what was doing all of this all along. Whereas this time we are fully aware that there is a creature. We don't know what it is, but there is, there is a creature that is posing a very visible threat to these characters. And, you know, I love that they really thought about how to incorporate them into the story throughout. One of the greatest strengths that Underwater has is its ability to build tension and I think it does it so effectively because it was never afraid to mix it up. It would very often stack layers upon layers of anticipation. It would then just dissipate right at the height of those tensions and you wouldn't get anywhere near the climax that you thought you were going to get. And then just as you let your guard down, it would launch an offensive again. The fact that it would do that, but it would also give you a lot of payoffs exactly when you were expecting them. You never really get to figure out exactly where you stand with what is going on in the film. And it, I don't know, it kind of adds that sense of, I mean, we are talking about big monsters under the sea and it feels strange to be talking about realism here, but it does add more of a sense of realism because things do happen unexpectedly in real life and there's no warning sign about it. So you know, to not have a massive sense of foreshadowing a lot of the time, and then all of a sudden have, you know, a massive assault launched against your senses. It really worked. That being said, I don't think that we got the climax we deserved when it absolutely mattered the most. I do think that the ending was a little bit of a letdown without going into too many spoilers. It wasn't as devastating as I'd hoped it would be, which sounds like a strange thing to say, but you know, it's it's a very um, desolate hour and a half. We have the odds stacked against us right from the off here. I mean, the film starts straight away with the rig being destroyed and it, it never ever looks good at any point during the film. So 
to me, it it would have satisfied probably the darker side of my soul if there was absolutely no shred of a happy ending at all here. So that's what I had to say about Underwater. I think it's definitely probably going to be the best monster movie that we get this year. Uh, I, I don't think we've had one for a little while, at least not one that's been done brilliantly. And I'm not saying that this one has been done to that extent, but it's certainly a better effort than previous offerings that we've seen. And in terms of a nice tight 90 minutes of terror, I don't think you'll do much better than this anytime soon. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you get an alert every single time we've got new content coming your way. And above all else, remember to keep it geeky.